Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is September 27th, 2023, and because of the dereliction of duty of Secretary Mayorkas and the Biden administration, this nation is under siege. We have record numbers of migrants coming into this country, estimated at 10,000 a day that we know of, and an unknown amount of gotaways. In places like New York City, where people like Mayor Eric Adams and Governor Kathy Hochul have celebrated sanctuary cities, we now see, in fact, that they had no plans to be a sanctuary. They just wanted to pander. And now, in places like New York City, we have migrants who are coming into the United States of America through our points of entry. They're coming to the United States of America for a better way of life. They're leaving their homes, their families, risking their lives to cross this border. And instead of being given that sanctuary, they are in old hotels. They are in empty warehouses at airports. This amendment today will ensure that no funds made available by this act may be used by the Department of Defense to provide assistance to the Department of Homeland Security to house migrants or illegal immigrants or illegal aliens on military installations located in the United States of America. Back in May, Governor Hochul sent a letter to President Biden and CC members of the New York delegation asking that he allow military installations to be utilized for housing migrants. And just recently we've seen that there is a deal in place for migrants to not only be housed, but buildings to be erected at Floyd Bennett Field, a military installation in Brooklyn, New York. And not only is it a military installation, but like many others throughout this country, Floyd Bennett Field plays host to my brothers and sisters from the New York City Police Department, housing our aviation team, our scuba team, special operations, and many more. This simply says, no funds to be utilized given to the Department of Homeland Security to house migrants and illegal aliens on military installations. I now yield time to the chairman. The gentleman from California is recognized. I rise in support of the amendment. The Biden administration is failing our country and undermining our security with the unmitigated crisis along our southern border. This policy-driven uh, crisis affects more than just the four states that share a border with Mexico, mine included. Today, every city in America is dealing with the influx of illegal migrants because the Biden administration has failed to secure the border and is unwilling to enforce the nation's immigration laws. The administration's refusal to act has created looming crisis at our nation's military installation, which should not be used to house migrants. They are not designed or equipped for refugee camps. Housing illegal immigrants on military installations negatively impacts our security and readiness. I understand that New York Democrats have created over 200 migrant camps in the general ladies district and gentlemen's area. Uh, and I stand with them on the need for real solutions to the border crisis. I urge a cr uh, yes vote and yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman reserves. For what purpose is the gentleman from Hawaii recognized? I stand in opposition to the amendment. Gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Well, I, I just heard my friend and, and chair of the subcommittee say something that I completely agree with, which is we need real solutions in immigration to the border crisis, and that's true. But this takes a piecemeal approach that is unnecessarily broad and un, un, unnecessary in general. Uh, to our knowledge, there is no current or planned use of active military bases to support DHS need for temporary or long-term detention of migrants crossing the southern border, and certainly if the claims by my colleague from New York are correct, that's worthy of debate. However, the amendment goes much, much farther uh, than that particular point. It says that the, that the military cannot provide any assistance to the Department of Homeland Security to house persons on a military installation, and so therefore we have to ask the question, well, is, is that too broad in an amendment? 
Uh, let's, let's take a look at a couple of examples, or at least one example in particular. Um, it, would, it would apply in that case to government-wide efforts like Operation Allies Welcome, which was the evacuation of Afghan refugees after the collapse of the government in Afghanistan in 2021. DHS at the time worked with the Department of Defense and State to use military installations to temporarily house Afghan refugees fleeing imminent danger and persecution. And this was a critical tool to save lives. Um, there are, I am sure, other situations that we can envision in which we would want to access our military installations for very tailored purposes with congressional oversight, purposes that are under the control of the Department of Homeland Security. So if we want to have a debate over immigration, let's have at it. If we want to recognize we have a real problem, I'm the first to recognize that as well. But the amendment certainly takes a very, very broad approach uh, to a problem that I think we can all agree is, is definitely a problem and rules out many other situations uh, that in all honesty we would want the discretion to the DOD. So uh, much better off for Congress to retain that discretion uh, to the DOD where necessary for national purposes with congressional oversight and with very tailored congressional restrictions. Uh, with that, I yield. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves the ba balance of his time. Gentleman from uh, New York is recognized well, for thank, what purpose? Thank you very much, and I'm glad to see that we're all looking for solutions to the failed policies of Joe Biden. But what we're focused on today is the fact that military installations, our national parks like Floyd Bennett Field, where military operations actually take place, they are critical to defense. They are not equipped to house migrants. That's what we are focused on today, that there are no plans in place and that these plans, the ones that they're rushing to, are not the ones that we support. With that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Hawaii is recognized. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, first of all, I think we're trying to confirm whether or not Floyd Bennett Field is in fact a military installation within the definition of the gentleman's amendment. But that point aside, again, I would, I would say that if we're trying to solve the particular issue that my colleague and friend from New York uh, is trying to solve. Let's try to solve that one, but let's not do so with a blunt instrument that takes away discretion across the board for legitimate uses of military installation under congressional oversight, such as uh, the Afghan refugee situation. So we, we can talk about this on the floor. Yes, it's, it's uh, completely necessary to uh, discuss and debate this, but let's not, let's not, let's not over play this uh, so that DOD never has the flexibility to have any military installation used for legitimate purposes that we would all agree with. With that, I reserve.